Hi, I'm Nauko Ellis, a professor in chemical and biological engineering at the University of British Columbia in Vancouver, Canada. I'm delighted to be here as a part of the Polymundus workshop in Valencia and be glad to share about the campus as a living lab at UBC. Vancouver is on the west coast of Canada. It is one of the warmest cities within Canada. However, we like to um, talk about the weather a lot and we are delighted to be here in April in Valencia and to partake in the sunshine that is here. Vancouver is also a birthplace of Greenpeace and that um, resonates with many of the residents in Vancouver as a city as well as the campus itself. The University of the British Columbia, UBC, sits on a peninsula and we have a golf course, a nudist beach. It's a, a, a fairly well established community out in the peninsula, a little bit far away from the city that you can see in the background. We are also um, blessed with a lot of accessibility to nature and we attract a lot of students, um, 55,000 in all, to this campus every year um, who are quite outdoorsy oriented and um, passionate about sustainability as well. So moving on to the topic of this uh, lecture is inside the living laboratory. We um, pr uh, pride in, in ourselves to talk about campus as a living lab and how sustainability is in our DNA at our campus. UBC has had some aggressive um, greenhouse gas emissions reductions target and compared to 2007 we have achieved our target of 33% reduction um, earlier than uh, what was target for 2015. We are well on our way to reach to the goal of 67% of reduction compared to 2007 and 2020. The next slide shows the actual um, measured greenhouse gas emissions up to the date which was um, taken for 2016 and it shows that we have in, in, um, decreased our GHG emissions and um, the target that we see are for 2020 that we are currently um, planning uh, to have number of um, uh, utilities come on board. So this is um, a culmination of number of innovations and enablers of innovations on campus. For one, we have a very strong teaching and research excellence. For a campus as a living lab to be successful, it needs to be integrated into what we do, which is the core function of the university as in teaching and research. So the uh, example that I'll be talking today is uh, related to a biomass utilization project which is, has a number of research projects associated with it, uh, 25 or so in all, from different disciplines in looking at this one uh, impact of this one technology being demonstrated on campus. We also have this um, luxury of having an independent municipality in that there is a clear boundary between where we are as a campus and the rest of the city in that some of the assessment measurements are easier to collect. We pride on ourselves in terms of innovation and commercialization leader in that number of startup companies that are um, merging from campus um, research is um, there as well. Now we can call it as a support of the municipal policy but BC as a province um, has carbon tax that has um, given us the driver to look at different options for reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Finally, to have an independent utilities on campus also um, assist us 
in making this decision in having this biomass uh, gasifier on campus. So as a definition, campus as a living lab is we are seeing our campus as a lab in itself. It's a giant sandbox where we have the freedom to explore and perhaps bring in different technologies at a scale that is relevant um, and seeing how the impact in terms of technological, environmental, economic and social aspects of sustainability can be uh, realized. So the example that I'll be talking about is the Bioenergy Research and Demonstration Facility, BRDF in short, where we are having a couple trucks, uh, truck loads of biomass being collected and delivered on campus each day. And this is where the biomass is being gasified in order to produce hot water in order to um, heat up the buildings on campus. So I mentioned about uh, BC, the provincial of British Columbia's carbon tax, which is first of its kind in North America. Um, and UBC's Vancouver campus has looked at this uh, since the introduction of the, the tax and looking moving forward, decided to take on this um, implementing this biomass uh, facility in order to reduce our greenhouse gases. So the tax in itself was introduced in 2008 at $10 per uh, tonne of CO2 equivalent emissions. It was supposed to be a tax that was increasing $5 a year. Um, now you see that a plateauing at $30 a ton at this point uh, due to the change of the government and we, we shall see what's going to happen as we go into the election in May of 2017. However, this has given a clear driver for us to change the way we operate on campus and has uh, given us a chance, an opportunity to adopt the bioenergy uh, facility. So the biomass gasification unit itself is provided by a local company called Nextera, where they have a um, air gasified um, updraft gasification system on campus. The Nextera system requires a fuel that's um, two or three truckfuls a day to be delivered. And these are biomass waste stream that is collected within 120 kilometers diameter of the campus. Um, construction wood waste to other types of biomass waste is being chipped and delivered. Uh, the net thermal energy is six megawatt thermal. And when we had the um, option of working with the internal combustion engine, we were able to provide 1.7 megawatt elect electrical. So the schematic here that we see are showing the biomass being delivered with certain moisture content, and that is being um, dried to a lower moisture content of 10 to 20% using residual heat available in the system. And this is being stored. Once it's ready, it goes through an auger system to be delivered into a gasifier, which is the reactor, um, and heated up with air um, gasification system. A syngas is produced. Now, in this schematic, this is where syngas is being cleaned of tar through the tar cracking unit by heating the syngas up to 1200 degrees C and then cracking some of the tarry materials before it is um, filtered and before it was injected into the internal combustion engine for electrical, electricity um, generation. However, due to the um, heat exchanger issues that we have had, currently this uh, scheme is not being utilized, um, but we are uh, burning the syngas in order to produce the thermal um, energy. 
So um, delivery of construction wood waste looks something like this in terms of uh, daily um, truckloads of these material. We're also having some research into social implications of having these trucks come on site. Um, we have some uh, permanent residents on campus as well and they have all been consulted uh, about this uh, operation as well. This is a photograph from outside of the unit. Um, what you see through the um, glass window is the Nextera gasifier system. And uh, we now have some uh, self-guiding um, um, sort of write-up about this system so that anybody who is walking along this unit or this building will be able to understand what is going on on campus and how it's generating quarter of a percent of the heat requirement in the winter time and a full um, heat requirement in the summertime uh, using waste um, wood uh, biomass collected from local sources. This is the GE Jambacher engine. Um, currently, uh, it is using renewable natural gas in terms of generating electricity. But this is the beauty of what's called a demonstration project in that we can quickly fail and learn from our mistakes and we are able to adjust to some of the um, requirements that we have on campus in terms of operation and be able to um, learn from, from the process. So in a nutshell, that was about the campus as a living lab on the University of British Columbia. I hope you enjoyed this little segment. Thank you.